Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be continuing on my series of reviews on the Shrek franchise. Today with what was supposed to be the finale to the franchise, Shrek Forever After. Let's take a trip back to 2010 for a film directed by Mike Mitchell and once again starring people like Mike Myers, Cameron Diaz, Eddie Murphy, Antonio Banderas, and this time starring people like Walt Dorn, John Hamm, Craig Robinson, and many more. All right, it's that time once again to talk about another Shrek film. If you're just now hopping on, I've been covering all of the Shrek movies leading up to Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, which I actually didn't see in theaters last year. It was the only Shrek movie or Shrek related movie that I've never seen in theaters. And then it ended up being one of the most beloved films of 2022, getting Oscar nominations and all this crazy stuff. And uh, I was definitely bummed that I missed out on it, but I had gotten the Blu-ray full collection set of all of the Shrek movies movies including Shrek the musical which we will be covering here as well as part of this series and uh, yeah I figured why not cover all of them here on the channel leading up to Puss in Boots The Last Wish which will be a first time watch for me so today we're talking about Shrek Forever After which is easily the film I've seen the least in the bunch of Shrek films but was a film I always heavily enjoyed but has terrible terrible reviews online and similar to the other videos i've done recently i'm also gonna at the very end of the video do quick reviews for some of the shorts that the shrek franchise has released i've covered two shorts in the last two videos i've done i have two more shorts to talk about here in this video but let's get started on shrek forever after the movie opens up and we have a flashback showing us the king and queen fiona's parents are actually meeting with rumpelstiltskin this is before the events of the first film before before Shrek actually saves Fiona. And Rumpelstiltskin is pretty much offering him one of his contracts, his magical contracts, where Fiona will no longer be an ogre at night. She will be saved, she will be fine, she can live a normal life, but they have to sign away the, the kingdom of far, far away. And right out of the gate, revisiting this movie, I was completely shocked that this was even something that the king and queen were even thinking about doing. Of course, that doesn't end up happening because right as they're going to sign it, they end up getting word that Fiona has been rescued. Of course, they don't know at the time that it's going to be a rescuing by Shrek, but of course, that would end up changing the course of the future. Because of that, Rumpelstiltskin has always held uh, some sort of negative kind of vibe towards Shrek because of him ruining his plan to rule the kingdom of far far away so years years later we hop into the events after shrek the third we see that fiona and shrek are living a happy life with their kids they got uncle donkey stopping by with all his dragon donkey hybrid kids you got puss in boots in the mix and the rest of their magical friends that stick around like uh you know the wolf and and, and gingerbread man pinocchio the three blind mice and the rest of the gang and the movie opens up and we see that shrek is living a happy life you know he's living a mundane every day is the same kind of thing being a father kind of life and at first the movie starts with him having smiles but as the movie progresses in the first little bit we start to see that he's kind of feeling like he's losing himself he doesn't feel like the shrek that he once was he doesn't feel like a real ogre he's become this celebrity in a lot of ways people aren't afraid of him anymore but he kind of misses what it felt like to be the secluded ogre that everybody was afraid of that ends up having him meet rumpelstiltskin who offers him one day of being the ogre he once was uh, but in exchange he has to give up one day of his life what shrek doesn't know about this contract though and the way that rumpelstiltskin worded it is that he's taking the day Shrek was born, meaning that at the end of this day, if he doesn't complete what the contract says, which is getting true love's kiss from Fiona once again, that he will cease to exist and now Rumpelstiltskin will rule the world. And we're gonna get a little bit further into the rest of the movie in just a second, but that's the base premise. Now you have Shrek in this world where he no longer is married to Fiona, he doesn't have his kids, he doesn't know Donkey, he doesn't know Puss in Boots, he doesn't know anybody and he's now this feared ogre again. But when he comes into this new world, while he might enjoy people being afraid of him and not wanting to be around him at first and kind of takes him back to what it once was, he realizes quickly that this world is exactly the opposite of anything he would want it to be with Fiona and everybody else not knowing who he is. He doesn't have his kids. Nobody cares for him. Nobody loves him. And he's pretty much given up everything that he had in his life and now has to fight for it once again. 
Leading up to this though, I have to mention this scene. One of my favorite moments of this entire movie is the birthday party that is a pretty much the inciting incident for why Shrek kind of blows his lid and wants to sign this contract. He's at a birthday party for his three kids and everybody's just, you know, talking to him, nagging him, you know, trying to get him involved with all these different things at the party, uh, making sure he has the cake, making sure he does that, making sure he's there, does this, does that, whatever the case may be. He feels very overwhelmed at this birthday party. And one of the funniest moments in this entire movie is when there's a young kid who just really wants to hear Shrek do the roar. As long as you're not doing anything, how about one of those famous Shrek roars? Do the roar. Let me set you straight, Butterpants. An ogre only roars when he's angry. You don't want to see me angry, do you? Do it. And yeah, I just had to mention that scene because I, I love it. Every time I watch this, this movie, that scene with that little kid, and yeah, do the roar. Love it. Never get tired of it. So going back and revisiting it, that definitely gave me a big smile and a laugh when I was watching that sequence of the film. And I'm happy to say that's something I really enjoy about this film in general is the humor. I feel like it's very similar to the first two films. There's a lot of, you know, references to pop culture and other movies, Disney, like they did with the first three films. Uh, but yeah, I just like the humor in this one. And more than anything, I really like Shrek's journey because while there's a lot of great humor and different things like that, I think what this movie does really well is showcase how much the character has changed from the very beginning of the first film to where he is here he's being an a-hole at the beginning of the film and his selfish side wants him to go back to what things were and that's something i can relate with i'm somebody who oftentimes can feel maybe a little bit overwhelmed with life as it is the changes that have happened and maybe i want to go back to simplistic times maybe i want to go back to when i didn't necessarily have people who rely on me or when there wasn't as many responsibilities and while on some fronts it's on a lazy side of things sometimes it could just be fairly just feeling annoyed about things and about people in my life but it only takes me a moment to really just you know take a moment, take a breath, and recognize that the people in my life are in my life for a very specific reason, and I would never want to take them from my life. Except in the case of this movie, Shrek recognizes immediately that he's made a mistake. And so over the course of the film, he reunites with the characters that he knows and loves, like Donkey, Fiona, and Puss in Boots, and they're all in completely different places. Donkey isn't married to the dragon. We see that the dragon at the end is actually one of the beasts that Rumpelstiltskin releases to try to kill Shrek and the gang later on in the film. Uh, Donkey is just kind of like this lackey. He's essentially like just pulling carriages around. He's a little bit more disheveled. His hair is all over the place. He's afraid of Shrek when he first meets him. Fiona, most known notably is a warrior and is the leader of a group of ogres uh, where now she's like this leader of this tribe and she is a hardened kind of you know ogre woman who isn't romantic and isn't living in this fairy tale mentality like we see her in the first film in this iteration of the story fiona has kind of had to fend for herself she saved herself from the castle and now she leads these ogres to stop them from being destroyed by the witches that run under rumpelstiltskin as rumpelstiltskin's whole goal is to capture and destroy as many ogres as he can. While he's there meeting Fiona, he actually runs into Puss in Boots, as I mentioned, who is now big and fat and is a over-pampered cat in this one versus the badass cat with the uh, swashbuckling, you know, sword and boots and the nice hat. Uh, in this iteration, he's got a nice little bow on. He's a lot cuter of a character in a lot of ways, and it just leads to a lot of humor. So everything's been flipped on its head, which is something this franchise likes to do. It likes to take familiar premises from previous films, and flip things on their head and i think in this film they do a good job of it and i think more than anything i just really enjoy that shrek recognizes that the things in his life that he had that he was complaining about you know he just didn't realize what he had until it was gone and that's something that he says and so he has to fight to make fiona fall in love with him again to make these friends that he don't know who he is anymore recognize that he's somebody important in their life and that there's somebody important in his life and just overall i enjoy the journey the animation is top notch i think that the musical score is great throughout the voice acting again is really great as usual i really enjoy this cast rumpelstiltskin i think is a really great villain definitely one of the more notable ones in the franchise he's annoying he's conniving and you just definitely want to slap the shit out of him while he's on screen but he definitely creates a lot of different things that happen in the story that are frustrating for our characters and i think for the most part he is a really good antagonist he gets under the skin of not only the characters but the audience members and I really want to praise uh, Walt Dorn who plays the character because he plays the voice incredibly incredibly annoyingly but it, very convincingly and I really really thoroughly enjoy Rumpelstiltskin as a villain in this franchise. Rumpelstiltskin was referenced in Shrek the Third and there's even a character that they point as being Rumpelstiltskin. I don't know if they just made that a different version of Rumpelstiltskin or if they just didn't know that in the fourth film they were going to make him a character as like a main villain and they just 
didn't want people to really think about it, you know, that they kind of redesigned the character. Whatever the case may be, uh, that was definitely weird and something I noticed upon these rewatches. And I really enjoyed spending time with the rest of the ogres that, you know, Fiona is leading in this film that Shrek gets to know. You know, you have all these hardened warrior ogres, and Shrek's no longer really this hardened ogre anymore. You know, he's a nice family dad kind of person. And I think that at the core of this movie, not only is it about recognizing what you have and recognizing how you don't know what you have until it's gone and having to fight for those things back but it's also something of recognizing that you know it's, it's okay to no longer be this hardened version of what you once were it's okay to no longer be you know what you were it, it's nice to change it's nice to, to sometimes you know be a little softer in some areas in our life and i think as we get older that just tends to be the case some of the hardest people you know when they're really young a lot of times as they get older they tend to be softer personalities softer people maybe it's because of somebody that they fell in love with maybe it's because they had kids or maybe it's just because the people in their life you know loved on them and cared for them and they just slowly became softer people it doesn't mean that they're weaker just means that they're no longer these people that are chasing you know aggression and 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 fear and different things like that and i think that for the most part this movie really captures that very well this is a movie that gets a lot of hate it's easily the most hated it's got terrible reviews on most websites but i'm in the minority in saying that i think shrek forever after is one of the most underrated movies in this franchise so with that said let's go ahead and move on to one of the short films i wanted to talk about here and this one's different and all the other ones that i've covered so far most of them have been like maybe like five six minute sing-alongs and this one i was even considering not counting as one of the shorts however it is considered one of the shorts on the blu-ray pack that i got as well as online when i looked up list of the shorts so i figured hey i still got to cover it to some degree this one is called shrek's yule log and pretty much all that there is to this one is it's kind of something that you would put on on the tv at a christmas party where the movie starts or the short film starts it's about 30 minutes long and you have shrek pretty much telling fiona to start the fire bring out the cookies and then the camera pans in on a a fireplace uh, where over the course of the 30 minutes a bunch of various characters from all of the Shrek films will appear in front of the fireplace maybe Donkey for instance will step in front of it and get his uh, tail burned by the fire maybe the you know one of the characters will come in front and maybe do a little dance maybe say something funny and then move away it's kind of something that's meant to be on in the background and isn't really even much of a short film it isn't really even much of something that is narrative based in any way shape or form so it's hard to really review it but it was cute to watch and kind of look through i won't lie i skimmed through it mainly because there's really nothing to it but i wanted to at least talk about it here on the channel but now let's talk about a real short film that we could talk about here and definitely one of the most notable ones because as i mentioned most of the ones i've covered up to this point have been things that are you know little sing-alongs a few minute long little narratives you know they're pretty quick for the most part and this one is a almost 30 minute long one called scared shrekless where it's halloween and all of our characters shrek and the rest of the gang are celebrating halloween and they're all trying to scare shrek so in order to do that they say how, how about we tell scary stories and whoever scares shrek is the winner well shrek says let's take it up a notch so they end up going to lord farquaad's castle from the first film uh, that's now abandoned run down down. there's a couple of fun references to things from that first film and uh, it's kind of like supposed to be like a haunted house haunted castle kind of vibe they end up getting there into the castle and they all sit down to tell stories and over the course of the stories being told the various characters end up running off in fear leading to Shrek, Fiona, and their three kids scaring off a donkey at the very end and winning the whole contest. And it's pretty cool because over the course of them telling these little stories, it starts off with Gingerbread Man or Gingy telling a story that is similar to The Bride of Frankenstein. And it's something that's similar, but it's like a little cookie woman gingerbread bride that's made. I think it's called The Bride of Gingy, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a play on that. Then you have a story that's simultaneously told uh, by both uh, Puss and Boots as well as Donkey and the two of them are talking about a story that is very similar to Psycho which I thought was really cool so you have these shorts that they're telling these anthology stories that they're telling within this short uh, that are you know similar to popular horror films and then it's Shrek's turn to tell a story that includes Pinocchio uh, and it's the Exorcist which I thought was super cool I thought it was really cool that we had all of these different like little anthology stories that we're telling that were parody Shrek versions of these big iconic horror films and scared shrek list i thought was great i thought it was a lot of fun it's about 30 minutes long if you've never checked it out before i definitely think it's worth watching if you're a fan of these characters it's not the greatest 
thing, but it's just a fun little silly Halloween anthology short film kind of thing that I definitely think is worth watching. And that's going to be my thoughts on Shrek Forever After, Shrek the Yule Log, as well as Scared Shrekless. I hope you guys enjoyed this installment of the Shrek franchise that I've been covering here on the channel. Up next, I will be covering Shrek the Musical, which is the only live action thing within this franchise. I'm looking forward to checking that out as it is going to be the first time I've ever checked out Shrek the Musical. I've only seen clips here and there and some still images, but quite frankly, I don't really know what I'm in store for other than just a retelling of the Shrek movie with, I'm assuming, musical numbers uh it should be interesting i have the blu-ray copy of this so it's a pro shot actual like movie um so i'm really looking forward to checking it out i also saw it's quite a bit longer than the original shrek film so i'm curious where things are kind of extended and what kind of things are expanded upon i feel like it should end up turning out to be a pretty good time so i'm looking forward to checking that out i'll also have two more short film reviews within that video and then we'll wrap this up guys with puss in boots the last wish which i'm really looking forward to checking out and uh, it's been a lot of fun covering the shrek movies here with you guys on the channel it's been a lot of fun hearing you guys chime out down below let me know what you think about these movies and this franchise let me slow down here i feel like i'm rambling a little too fast whatever the case may be leave any and all comments down below let me know what you guys think about shrek forever after the yule log and scared shrek list or just one of them whatever the case may be i appreciate all of you guys for watching and i'll see you beautiful people in the next one Bye bye